Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with the SMCV100B, AM, FM, and RDS Testing. This presentation shows how to use a Rodian Schwartz SMCV100B vector signal generator to create broadcast AM and FM test signals, as well as how to configure RDS subcarriers. This presentation assumes a basic understanding of amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, and the radio data system, or RDS. Separate technology presentations are available if you'd like a brief introduction to, or review of, any of these topics. The Rodian Schwartz SMCV100B is a compact vector signal generator that can be used to generate a wide variety of both audio and video broadcast signals. This includes standard analog AM and FM signals, as well as FM signals containing digital RDS and dark subcarriers. These signals are generated continuously in real time using either an internal or external modulation source. The SMCV is operated via a touchscreen and intuitive graphical user interface, but it can also be remotely controlled over VNC and supports industry standard Skippy commands. Although all SMCV models support all broadcast standards, two license options are needed for the testing described in this presentation. Option K519 to enable broadcast standards and option K155 for AM, FM, and RDS. The first of the three sections of this presentation covers analog AM signal generation, so let's begin there. The first step in generating AM broadcast signals is to go to the baseband block in the SMCV's user interface and select Audio AM from the list of available modulation types. Clicking on this block will bring up the Audio AM dialog, and a simple toggle switch is then used to enable or disable AM audio modulation. Note that like all other signal generation tasks on the SMCV, both the RF output frequency and output level must be set and the RF output block must also be turned on. The second tab in Analog AM settings is AM Modulator, and the Audio Signal sub-tab defines basic AM modulation parameters. The first is the source of the AM modulation. We'll cover this in more detail on the next slide. The audio modulation can be toggled on and off, and the nominal modulation depth level can be set as well. The last parameter is the frequency of the tone created by the SMCV's internal audio generator when this is used as a modulation source. The SMCV supports three different sources of AM modulation. If input signal is set to external, then an external SPDIF or SPDIF modulation source can be connected to the user 1 BNC connector on the rear of the SMCV. The SMCV also has an internal audio generator that can create a simple tone. In this case, both the frequency and the level are configurable, as shown on the previous slide. And finally, the SMCV can also use an audio file in WAV format as the modulation source. These files can be copied to the SMCV over the LAN connection or via a standard USB drive. The other tab under AM Modulator is Modulation Settings. Here, the nominal modulation depth of the signal can be configured. Note that this denotes the reference depth and will depend on the input signal. The value shown under Modulation Depth shows the current modulation depth of the generated signal. This is an informational display and cannot be changed or set by the user, but the values will change dynamically depending on the modulating signal or source. Next, we'll look at configuring analog FM modulation, which is similar in many ways to how analog AM modulation is configured. As with AM, analog FM modulation is set by going to the baseband block and selecting Audio FM from the menu. And as before, modulation is enabled or disabled from the Audio FM tab. Remember that frequency and level must also be configured, and RF output must be enabled as well. The FM modulator dialog is similar to AM modulation. 
in that it has the same input signal options, namely external source, internal audio generator, and audio player. But unlike AM, the FM modulator also enables selection and configuration of the left and right audio channels. These can be set identically or with inverted phase and can be independently enabled or disabled. The parameter groups audio left and audio right are used to configure the parameters for each of these stereo channels. The last set of FM parameters we'll look at is modulation settings. The mode can be set to either mono or stereo. Pre-emphasis is used in FM radio to improve SNR by boosting high frequency components at the modulator or transmitter and then reducing them at the demodulator or receiver. On the SMCV, preemphasis can be switched on or off and has user configurable parameters as well. The frequency deviation of the audio signal and the FM stereo pilot are likewise user configurable. And finally, this dialog is where RDS slash RBDS and or dark can be enabled. So now let's go through how to configure an RDS subcarrier within an analog FM signal. After that, we'll also briefly discuss dark and dark configuration. In order to generate an RDS signal, an FM stereo signal must first be configured. After enabling RDS, additional configuration tabs will appear. These tabs are for general RDS parameters, alternative frequencies, enhanced other networks, the traffic management channel, and other similarly formatted information, and special parameters. Note too that several types of frequency deviation are also user configurable. In the remainder of this presentation, we'll go through these dialogues and explain the meaning and use of these different parameters. One very important concept in RDS is groups, since RDS information is encoded into a sequence of groups. Groups are identified by a number and a version, for example, 0B or 2A. The settings we'll be describing over the next few slides will only take effect if the corresponding group is present in the sequence. In most cases, we'll indicate the group along with each message type, but please refer to the RDS standards for a more complete list. Up to 38 groups can be entered, and these are separated either by commas or by spaces. Once configured, the group sequence is cycled through continuously. Now let's briefly describe the main RDS parameters. PI is the program identification, which is a 16-bit number represented as four hexadecimal digits. This identifier is mapped to a station or broadcaster, but this value is not normally displayed on the receiver. PS, on the other hand, is the program service name and does normally get displayed on the receiver. It consists of up to eight alphanumeric characters and is typically a user-friendly station name. Both PI and PS are sent in groups 0A or 0B. The type of program is indicated in PTY, which is a number from 0 to 32 that defines a type or genre, such as sports or news. This is sent in every group, but note that the interpretation of these values is different in RDS and RBDS. The program type can be further defined in the PTYN parameter, for example, football as a subtype of sports. PTYN is sent in group 10A, but this value is not often displayed on RDS receivers. Another parameter commonly displayed on receivers is radio text. This is a field containing either 64 or 32 alphanumeric characters. Radio text is most often used to display things such as station name, song and or artist name, websites, phone numbers, and even advertisements. Another common parameter is the MS flag, which indicates that the program is music or speech. The purpose of this flag is to allow receivers to switch volume settings based on the type of audio being broadcast. MS can be transmitted in groups 0A, 0B, and 15B. 
There are also some less common parameters that are used to convey additional properties to the receiver. For example, whether the PTI or program type parameter is dynamically changing, whether audio compression is being used, whether audio was recorded with an artificial head, that is using so-called binaural techniques, and whether or not the audio is stereo or mono. Most of these parameters are not typically used. Clock time and clock offset are, however, not uncommon parameters, and they allow the receiver to synchronize its time with the transmitting station. This can be particularly helpful with regards to traffic information, something we'll discuss a bit later in this presentation. RDS also includes information about transmitters broadcasting the same program on multiple frequencies. The AF, or Alternative Frequency Parameters, reduce the time needed for a receiver to switch to another transmitter when reception is degraded on the current frequency. When configuring AF, either method A or method B can be used. Method A, which is sent in group 0A, simply sends the number of alternative frequencies and then a list of those frequencies, as shown here. The other method, method B, is used for more complex scenarios and transmits information in the form of frequency pairs. Eon, or Enhanced Other Network Parameters, are used to transmit information regarding other broadcast services. That is, it updates information in the receiver regarding services other than the one currently being received. This includes common parameters such as PI and PTY, as well as information needed to link programs. EON is not commonly implemented, so please refer to the SMCV documentation if you'd like more detail about how to configure these parameters. Now let's look at traffic information. One of the original design goals of RDS was to carry traffic information to mobile or in-car receivers. On the most basic level, this is accomplished using two flags. The first is the traffic program bit, which indicates that a program may contain some type of traffic report or information. The second is the traffic announcement bit. When a program has TP set and then TA is set, this generates a traffic announcement. Although the implementation is receiver dependent, in most cases the receiver will then display or play a related traffic information message. Additional traffic related information can also be sent over the traffic management channel. The TMC open format tab is used to configure the traffic management channel as well as open format open data application parameters. These elements allow a more flexible definition of different applications and parameters compared to the basic RDS specifications. For example, to enhancements to the basic radio text message, radio text plus and enhanced radio text were both implemented using ODA. The SMCV supports both TMC and ODA, so please see the documentation for details and examples of how to configure these messages. The last topic is DARC, or the Digital Radio Channel. DARC is defined in ETSI EN 30751 and carries digital data at 16 kilobits per second using a special form of minimum shift keying. DARC is not widely used, the main application being wirelessly sending transportation-related information to signage. DARC is implemented as an additional subcarrier just above the RDS subcarrier. Data is sent in the form of blocks, with each block having a block identification code. We won't go into much technical detail on DARC in this presentation, but please see the separate presentation, Understanding DARC, if you're interested in learning more. Like RDS, a DARC subcarrier can only be enabled when generating a stereo FM broadcast signal. DARC is then configured under the DARC tab. The information contained within a dark signal can then be set to either a PRBS sequence or to user-defined data. In the case of user-defined data, this is done in the form of three block identification codes, each containing a user-defined text string. 
Let's end with a brief summary. The Rodian Schwartz SMCV 100B Vector Signal Generator can create both analog AM and analog FM broadcast signals. These are generated continuously or in real time with user configurable modulation parameters. The source of the modulation can be an external signal over a SPDIF connection, the SMCV's internal generator, or a user-provided audio file. In the case of stereo FM signals, user-configurable digital subcarriers can also be inserted into the analog signal. The SMCV supports both the Very Common Radio Data System, or RDS subcarrier, as well as the Less Common Data Radio Channel, or DARC subcarrier. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with the SMCV 100B, AM, FM, and RDS Testing. If you'd like to learn more about broadcast standards, broadcast signal generation, or signal generators from Rodi and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit us at rodi-schwartz.com.